central algorithm in elliptic curve cryptography is the so-called double and add algorithm. So if we do scalar multiplication, and we will do that a lot, we'll have the problem that the n, the scalar that we multiply with, is huge, because in cryptography we have to use big numbers to stay safe. So if n is just a huge number, like number, uh, let's say, in the uh, order of atoms on Earth or even atoms in the universe, then we simply can't add p n times onto each uh, itself because it's just too many addition operations if n becomes absolutely huge. So we can solve this with the double and add algorithm. And I'll introduce it with an example. So imagine we have the scalar n 151 and we want to compute a scalar multiplication, n times p. So what we can do is write n as powers of 2. Right. So this is nothing else than writing n as its binary representation. And then we can throw out all the zeros and have only powers of 2 that make up n. So how does this help? Well, we can actually just continuously double the point P and then add the doublings onto the result based on if it's in the uh, powers of 2 that we have written NS. So what do I mean by that? Well, we have N. That's the binary representation of N. So in the double and add algorithm, the first step, we take p, and then we add p to the result variable. Then extend in the next step, here you can see this is still 1, so there's a power of 2. Um, we add, we double p, so we receive 2p, and then since this is 1, we can see that this is in the final result, so we say, okay, we add true p to the result. So we have true p times p. So then we double to p again, we get 4p, and we check, okay, 4p is actually in the result, so we add 4p to the result. So the result is now 4p times 2p times p. You probably see a pattern here. Because this is 4, this is 2, this is 1. So the next step, we double p again. We always do the doubling and get 8p. Now we check. This bit is actually not set, right? This was 0 here. So it's not in the actual representation. So we don't add 8p to the result. Go to the next iteration and we double p again. We get 616p. This is in the binary representation. So we add it to the result. The result is now 16p plus 4p plus 2p times p and so on and so forth. So we have a result here. It, the computation is not done, but it's already very close to the final result. If you remember, the final result here was this as the scalar, so this would be the result, 2 to the power of 7 plus 2 to the power of 4, p plus 2 to the power of 2p, and so on and so forth. And this is 2 to the power of 4, this is 2 to the power of 2, this is 2 to the power of 1, this is 2 to the power of 0. So, by following that algorithm, we can very quickly go through the scalar and co compute the result. So this is the finished algorithm. We're going through the bits of the scalar, and if the bit is set, we add the doubled value to the result. 
otherwise we double our double value. This reduces the runtime from n to log n, and that is, of course, computable even for huge numbers.